I have returned from my time in the mountains with an all new YouTube video. This is my time in the mountains beard. It's the best I can do. Thankfully, this video is sponsored by Dollar Shave Club. Every month, you get a box of all your shaving needs and more. I try to maintain a clean look every day, and Dollar Shave Club is an easy way to make sure I do, with high-quality razors and more that I need to look and feel my best. And it being delivered straight to your home means no going to the store for it, which means more time for video games. I've only ever used shaving cream before, so Dr. Cover's shave butter was a great, easy way to keep the shave clean and smooth. For a limited time, new members can get a starter set for only $5, which includes a hefty, impressive handle, a full cassette of cartridges, and trial versions of the shave butter, body wash, and flushable wipes. After the first box, new blade cartridges are only a few bucks a month. You can sign up for this deal exclusively at dollarshaveclub.com slash projared, or by clicking the link in the description below. Dollar Shave Club, they help me stay a clean smooth boy. Back in the mid-90s, there were exactly two animes on television, Dragon Ball Z and Sailor Moon. To help pass the time until Dragon Ball Z came on, I watched Sailor Moon. Being in middle school, it wasn't something I could freely admit or talk about because, frankly, I would get bullied and made fun of because it was, quote, for girls. I'm glad how different the world is today, because now I can safely say, I love Sailor Moon. Transformations and special attacks, stories about love and friendship, subsequently one of my first anime waifus. Around the same time in the 90s is also when the emulation scene really blew up. And in the same way that I discovered a lot of old DBZ games, I was also finding a lot of Super Nintendo games for Sailor Moon. The first one I ever played ended up being a puzzle game. This one is called Bishoujo Senshi Sailor Moon S Kurukuren. It's not good. It's one of those puzzle games where you select a color and all connecting hearts of the same color disappear. You do this until some items appear and you slowly descend them down to collect them. Get all three in, you win the match. Annoyingly, all new hearts are crystal and you have to bounce your Luna or Artemis head over them to reveal the color in the first place, which means it's not a puzzle game of quick thinking and reflexes like, say, Tetris Attack. It's just slow and dumb, and barely Sailor Moon related. This one sucks. By the way, you'll notice in all of these games, I'll be picking my absolute favorite Sailor Scout, aka the best one, Sailor Mercury. Fight me on this one, I dare you. There's another Super Famicom puzzle game, this one also involving colors. I like this one way more though. The music is more upbeat, it has voice samples from the show, and the game mechanics are more unique. It's another all connecting colors disappear game, but you have to make every single block disappear and they always shift themselves down and to the left. And there's these arrow things that you can launch to destroy everything in the path. And I can certainly say I suck at it. This is the first stage and I feel like I can get really close each time. So close, ooh, so close, but I can't beat Chibiusa. Hey Sailor Mercury, remember how you're supposed to be the smartest and most strategic Sailor Scout? Because right now you keep losing to a seven year old! I'm sorry baby, I didn't mean that, please take me back. I think my favorite puzzler on Super Famicom though is this one, Sailor Moon Fua Fua Panic. It has balloons! The different scouts use their iconic attack straight up to inflate and then pop balloons. At least you feel like you actually play as the different scouts instead of a little cursor or something from your next fever dream. You even get special attacks and... Every now and then, what's up, it's your boy Tuxedo Mask! He shows up for reasons completely beyond me, pretends to help, and then leaves. Just like the real Tuxedo Mask. The puzzle games are fine, and I'm glad I know about them now, but they weren't the kind of Sailor Moon games that I was playing back in the day. I was playing the really good ones. Like this one, Bishoujo Senshi Sailor Moon. It's a beat-em-up! After selecting any of the main five, Mercury, obviously, you start beating the crap out of all kinds of enemies. And these aren't just random enemies either. They're all monsters that showed up in this series at some point. 
If you watched the anime at all, you're probably seeing some that seem pretty familiar to you. Oh no, it's Ray's grandpa! All three of them! Overall, it's a solid beat-em-up. Very similar to Final Fight, with basic attack combos, jumps, and grabs, with the uniqueness coming from having five different characters that all play a little differently, and everyone being able to charge up their signature projectile attack. I really love the small animations to make each sailor stay true to their character. For example, Mars uses a lot of kicks and is very confident in her fighting. Jupiter easily suplexes pretty much everyone. Moon is a scaredy cat but isn't afraid to headbutt a mother -er. And Mercury... I have never been so turned on before in my life. Though if you want to make the game really easy, play Sailor Venus. Because her chain pretty much makes it impossible to get hit. Oh man, you guys remember that part in the anime where Sailor Mercury was surrounded by a bunch of Negaverse villains? So she beat the shit out of some dude's car? There was a follow-up beat-em-up game, this one based around Sailor Moon R. It pretty much plays exactly the same to the first one, but the animations are much faster, cleaner, and it's overall smoother to play. Only Sailor Venus got nerfed. Oh wait, what is... what is Chibi Usa mode? Okay, real quick, funny story about Chibi Usa. As kids, we were searching the internet for any kind of information we could about Sailor Moon. And this is long before wikis or anything accurate existed, so as kids, we kind of piece things together and fill in the gaps ourselves. So, for some reason, we told each other and ourselves that Rini, or Chibiusa, was included into the show to be a sort of American representation within the series because the show was so big in America. So, we pronounced her name Chibi USA. So Chibi Murka is a brand new baby mode for babies. In it, it's single player only and you play as Sailor Chibi Moon. And it makes the entire game incredibly easy. For no reason other than the fact that she is so short, she literally can't get hit by most of the enemies. While you hit them in the crotch with the parasol. Overall, both beat-em-up games are still great. Very enjoyable to play our co-op and very faithful to the show. They're both still worth playing. Another genre that Sailor Moon lends itself naturally to is fighting games, and the Super Nintendo had a couple. The first one is Sailor Moon S, Jugai Ranto, and it's also really good. I have no idea if it's as technical as, say, Street Fighter, but I felt like I was doing some decent combos and cool things. You can play as the Inner Five Sailors and Sailor Chibi Moon. They all play very differently, although they have similarities. Everyone has some sort of projectile with different properties, strength of attacks, jumps, and the typical fighting game differences. The most unique thing this game offers is after selecting your character, you can assign 10 points to customize your scout. You can increase maximum health, special move damage, attack, and... and... Which is important to do, because if you don't put points in at all, you'll suck real hard. As evidenced by how badly I get rocked by Sailor Mars in the first stage. And long before tripping was a thing in Smash Brothers Brawl, it was in the Sailor Moon fighting game. Doing a dash can sometimes make you trip and make her all grumpy, open for attacks. If that isn't enough random annoyance, as a means of spam control I guess, sometimes your special attacks just straight up fail. Ah oh, man, you remember that one episode in the show where everyone was in trouble so Sailor Mars started charging up her Mars Fire Ignite attack and she just and then everyone died. The final three bosses are Sailor Pluto, Neptune, and Uranus. It isn't too bad until Uranus. She will rock the shit out of you. She's practically the Akuma of this game. Her legs are impossibly long. She's so fast and hits so hard. Okay, okay, I got it this time. Wall jumps, cross ups, yes, yes. Oh, she's so close to dead, I can- This also got a follow-up game, Sailor Moon Super S Xenon Sanka. It's not a full fighting game sequel, but more of an update. Similar to Street Fighter 2 Turbo to just Street Fighter 2. It has balanced tweaks, a few new stages, and a new final boss, Sailor Saturn. And she is worse than Uranus! Her staff gives a ridiculous range at like 5 projectiles! It sucks! 
If you beat her though, you can then play as every single character, which means now Saturn's powers of death are now mine. <laughs> How the heck do I play her and I'm dead? You wanna know what my favorite thing about all these different games? None of them are strictly girl games. Even though Sailor Moon's audience was dominantly female, they didn't try to make a bunch of games for girls. Simple platformers and other bullshit like that that was everywhere in the early 90s. Rather, they just made a bunch of games that were played by girls. No real point here. I just think that's great. There's one last Super Nintendo game that I want to talk about, and that's Sailor Moon Another Story. It's an RPG with an original story taking place between seasons, and it's pretty good. I mean, the story itself isn't great, as it's about the opposite Sailor Scouts, or evil ones, and they make everyone refight a bunch of past villains of the series. They do have a spotlight chapter for each of the main five, which is a neat way to get to know them and learn a little more character insight. The combat is pretty basic, normal attacks and special attacks. The big thing is that you can discover team attacks depending on who is in your party, and those are super fun. Hey Sailor Moon, how's your luck today? It's pretty good. It's a good thing too since the encounter rate is really high, but once you become stronger than the normal enemies, it's easy to wipe them out and move on. And your special attack energy recharges after every fight, so there's no issue with spamming your best specials to move on. In addition to choosing your members, you can also choose different formations, giving some more offensive and others more defensive stances. I like this the most and wish more turn-based RPGs gave options like this for combat. The only real complaint I have against it is that it's one of those RPGs where you'll get your ass kicked unless your stats hit a very specific number and then you'll destroy everything you face. Enemies either murder you or they are way too easy. There is no in between. Eh, that's fine. I'll just put as much attack as possible on Sailor Jupiter so that she can beat up any bad guy that bulls me. Whoa! Alright, that worked! Go Jupiter! Although Mercury will always be my one true love. That's freaking Queen Barrel! Too bad for her, I now have Sailor Uranus and the Bringer of Destruction on my side. Yeah! Hey Barrel! How do you feel after that ass kicking? I regret this. It's by no means the best RPG ever, but it's a very faithful, very well done tie-in game for Sailor Moon. There's a complete fan translation online, and if you're a fan of Sailor Moon, it's certainly worth checking out. I barely scratched the surface of Sailor Moon games. I only went over the ones on Super Nintendo, mostly because that's what I played back then. But there are dozens more games on other platforms. If anything, I hope that this gives you an idea of possible fun games to play, whether you're a fan of the series or not. I'm not ashamed to say that I love Sailor Moon, and this is partly in thanks to a wonderful anime series, and also partly thanks to a bunch of excellent video games that I got to experience as a child. Now there were a bunch of other Sailor Moon games for other consoles that I never got around to trying. And I can only imagine what those games would be like. Maybe I'll try them out someday. Watching YouTubers is a really great way to spend your time. And they really appreciate it when you watch too. But did you know there's more you can do to help out your favorite YouTuber? Clicking that subscribe button means a lot, and clicking the notification bell is extra special. Not only that, liking the video and leaving a comment helps them so much, even if the comment is as simple as saying that you liked the video. There's also social medias like Twitter or Instagram, or other platforms where your favorites may appear, like Twitch. Support them wherever and whenever you can, and you can be one super fan. Sailor Jared says, 